Hey guys, my name is Pixie, and today we're going to use the TinyDB storage component. This is going to be a very simple and quick tutorial, so let's get started. The design for this tutorial is going to be simple, nothing fancy, but we're going to use three different screens. Screen one will be our start screen. For this tutorial, I'm just going to give screen one a background image. It's the same image I use for almost every tutorial. Let's add a button to the design. Rename it button start. Change the image to button start.png and delete the text field. Pretty simple, nothing fancy to this button. Down here in the storage section, you'll find a tiny DB component. This is an invisible component with no properties in the design view. If you want to, you can rename this component. I'm gonna call it database. In the screen one properties, I've also changed the action bar color and set the alignment to center center. And of course you can do whatever you want to this design. Okay, so screen one design is done. Add another screen called welcome. Once the welcome screen loads, I'm gonna give it the same background image, same action bar color and change the alignment to center center. Nothing fancy, keeping it very simple. Drag a label onto the screen and change the text to select your spirit animal. Underneath the label, add a table arrangement, which you'll find under the layout section. The table arrangement should have two columns and three rows. Don't worry about changing the width and the height. This table will resize itself accordingly. When you add a table arrangement, it's difficult to see the rows and columns. You have to just kind of know where they are. Take a button and place it in the first cell. You should see the cell highlighted in blue as you hover over the table. We're going to use six buttons and each button will be located inside of a cell within this table. Let's start with button one. I have six little animal images and I've named them all avatar1.png through avatar6.png. Each of the images is 270 pixels wide by 270 pixels tall. That's a pretty big size for a button image so I'm gonna need to resize each button to a more appropriate size. And each image will be assigned to a button. So obviously the image that appears on button one should be avatar1.png, button two should be avatar2, and etc. Go through each button one at a time and change the height to 100 pixels, change the width to 100 pixels, change the image to the appropriate avatar, and delete the text field. When you're finished, your button should look something like this. Underneath the table arrangement, add another button. Rename it to button confirm. Add the button confirm.png image and delete the text for this button. Lastly, add a tiny DB component to this screen. You can keep the name as tiny DB1. I'm just gonna rename it to database, just like we did on screen one. It actually does not matter what you name this component and the name doesn't even have to match, but we'll talk more about that in the wrap up for this video. Okay, so the welcome design is done. We need one more screen and let's call this one main. The main screen is very simple. I'm gonna change the action bar color, set the alignments to center center and add the same background image. Drag an image component onto the screen and call it image avatar. Leave the default properties on this image, don't change anything. Drag a label underneath the image. Again, don't change any of the properties. Then drag another tiny DB component onto the screen. And again, I'll name it database. We're done with the design for all three screens. Very simple design for this tutorial, nothing crazy. Let's go back to screen one and talk about what we're trying to accomplish here. Let's pretend we're making a game where the user has a spirit animal. The user opens the app, they're taken to the start screen and they press the start button. The very first time the user opens the app, they're asked to choose their spirit animal and whatever they choose will be their animal in the game. We refer to that as the initial setup. We're setting some start parameters for the game. Once the user makes their decision, the game actually starts and that's when the user will go to the main screen. What about the second time the user opens the app? The user should not have to go through that initial setup again, right? Because they've already done that. So we need the app to remember that the user has already completed the initial setup and we need the app to remember the animal that the user chose. Head over to the block section for screen one and let's get started. Grab a button start click event, use a local variable inside this event and rename it to initial setup. In the TinyDB component, you'll find a built-in procedure called getValue. Add this block to the initial setup variable. This procedure has two arguments called tag and value if tag not there. We're going to use a tag called initial setup, just like the name of our local variable. So what we're doing is looking for a tag in the database called initial setup. If that tag does not exist in the database, we usually would output something like error, this tag does not exist. But in this case, we're going to use the logical value true. Now we need to check whether this tag outputs true or false. If initial setup equals true, then open another screen with the screen name as welcome. Otherwise, if initial setup is false, then open another screen with the start name as main. 
And that's all we need to do for screen one. Now let's add some blocks to the welcome screen. When this screen starts, let's add some values to the database that we can use on this screen and anywhere else in the app. Grab the built-in procedure called store value. I'm gonna call this tag animal names. We're gonna store a string value, but we're going to use this value like a list of names. We have six animals to choose from, so I'm gonna add their names in the order that the animals appear on the buttons. Each name is separated by a comma, and the last name does not have a comma, so there should be nothing after the word penguin. Next, create a procedure called set avatar with one argument called ID. When we call this procedure, we'll store a new tag in the database. This tag will be called avatar, and the value we want to store is the avatar's image. Let's use a join block to create the avatar's image. All of the animal images start with the word avatar, followed by a number, one through six, and they end with a .png extension. The number, one through six, will be passed through the procedure and stored in the ID argument. Now we need a local variable inside this procedure to grab the name of the animal. Let's call this variable animal names and grab the animal names tag from the database. We don't need to worry about adding an error value because you can't even get to this procedure without starting the screen. And when the screen starts, this tag is added to the database. There would be no logical reason for this tag to not exist in the database other than human error. We want label one to reflect the name of the chosen animal. And if we were to just grab this tag, we would see fox, bear, wolf, walrus, and penguin. What we want is if we click on the bear, we should see the word bear. So how do we do that? Well, we can convert this string to a list of names. We add a comma in between each name, which allows us to use the list from CSV row block. This will separate those commas in the string into an index in a list. Now we can set the text for label one to output the appropriate animal name. Use a join block to start the text with the words spirit animal. The second part of the text will display the index in animal names based on the ID that we passed through the procedure earlier. Now we need to make this procedure actually work. Grab a click event for all six of the buttons in the table arrangement. In each of the events, call set avatar and change the ID to reflect the button number. So button one should be ID equals one, button two should be ID equals two, and so on. Lastly, for the screen, grab the button confirm dot click event. This button will finalize the user selection, but we need to make sure the user hits this button only after selecting an animal. To do that, we'll check to see if the avatar tag exists in the database. If the tag does not exist, let's just leave this value blank. So if this value is blank, then change label one's text to please select a spirit animal. Otherwise, if at least one animal has been selected, then the avatar tag will exist in the database. So when the user clicks on confirm, we will set initial setup to false. And once the user makes their selection, we can take them straight to the main screen. Before we do that, let's take this section from the set avatar procedure and place it in the backpack, then head to the main screen block section. Open the backpack and grab the blocks from the welcome section. Place these blocks inside of main's initialize event. Add two more local variables. The names of these local variables should default to x and x2. You'll notice a red x icon near the word index equals id. Use the drop-down menu to change the variable id to x2. Then rename x to avatar and rename x2 to id. Honestly, you can do that in whatever order you want. I just did that to make sure index is linked to this variable. So when the screen starts, we should see the correct animal name from the database on label one, but we also need to update the image. Let's get the avatar tag from the database and store that image inside the avatar local variable. We also need to get the ID from the animals list, just like we did on the welcome screen, but we have to do it a little bit differently. Using a segment text block, we can get the numeric value from the avatar tag starting at character 7 and ending on character 8. Recall that the avatar tag is the actual name of the image, including the image's extension, that we're using for each of the animal buttons on the welcome screen. We have six avatar images that follow a specific naming convention. They each start with the word avatar, which is six characters in length. So we segment that text starting on character 7. We only need to grab one character after the letter R. This length will depend on how many images we actually have. In this case, we have six, but what if we had 10? The number one is only one digit, but the number 10 is two digits. If you had 99 images, you might consider using a naming convention with a leading zero and a length of two.
The easy part is to set image avatar's picture to the avatar variable, which contains the name of the image. Now let's run this app from screen one and see what happens. Press the start button, which should take you directly to the welcome screen. Once here, touch the confirm button and you should see the error message pop up that we need to select an animal. Start clicking on any button and you should see the labels change to reflect the name of the animal that you clicked on. So choose any animal and press confirm again. This should take you directly to the main screen where you'll see your chosen animal and the name of that animal. Close the app completely and start it back up again. Press the start button and you should be taken straight to the main screen because your initial setup should be completed. Pretty neat, right? And it was very easy to do. Okay, let's wrap this up. We're using three tiny DB components, one on each screen, and we called each of them database. Remember I said earlier that you can call this tiny DB component anything that you want. Honestly, we could have called each of them apple, orange, and banana. It wouldn't have mattered. It doesn't matter if they have the same name and it doesn't matter if they have different names. The app on your phone will only use one database and that one database is what allows us to pass values between screens. The TinyDB component is what helps us access that database. The same is true during testing while you're developing your app, except you're using the Appy Builder server, so all of your projects in Appy Builder share one database on your personal account. And obviously, whatever you do during testing will not show up on your phone because those are two separate databases. At any time during testing, you can clear the entire database on the Appy Builder server. To do that, you would grab the clear all tag and place it inside of any initialize event. You will not visibly see anything happen, but as soon as you run the app, the database will be cleared, and then you just go back into the blocks editor and delete those blocks. And that will clear everything in your database. But you can also clear a specific tag, like the initial setup tag, if you wanted to delete this tag because you need to go back into the welcome page multiple times and make changes and check different things. In the next video, we'll talk about Firebase, which is a more complex database, and we'll use a point system as an example for that tutorial. But that's all for now, good job, Guys, we are done. So don't forget to check out the Appy Builder community where you'll find more tips and tutorials. If you have any questions about projects that you're working on, you can always ask community members to help you out. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Feel free to comment below, subscribe, and thumbs up the video. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye!